Hey, good afternoon. Thank you, everybody, for attending this session. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to present you some of the ideas that we have discussed uh, during after a year of working in our project, which is uh, supported by the Collaborative Research Center Resource Cultures of the University of Tübingen, uh, regarding this case, the landscape use and the use of resources during the Bronze Age and the Southern uh, Iberian Peninsula. Uh, the name of our project is uh, Use of Resource Landscape and the Sociocultural Change in the Iberian Peninsula, and it intends in its archaeological component uh, characterizing the use of resources, the conformation and use of the landscape uh, during the Calcolithic and the Bronze Age periods. Uh, one of the main objectives of is identifying and characterizing different elements that had a role in the social and cultural change that occurring during the transition uh, between these two periods. Uh, the first phase, which finished in 2017 uh, and was conducted by Professor Bartelheim, Felicia Schmidt, and Javier Escudero Carrillo, was focusing characterizing the landscape and the use of resources during the Calcolithic period in the Guadalquivir Valley. One of the main goals of this phase was identifying the different types of resources that people had during the third millennium before Christ, which implied activities as archaeological survey of uh, mineral resources, as well as the survey and excavation of calcolithic sites in order to identify biotic or faunal uh, resources. So, for example, the archaeometallurgy survey focused in this area of the, of the Iberian Peninsula. This is a, a map from Professor Bartelheim from 2007, but uh, the, the survey of mineral resources focused in, in, in this area, and uh, which was plenty of mine ores uh, of copper, of course, and combined with the water and different biotic resources uh, provided by the marshes next to the river of the, of the Guadalquivir River, allowed to the team identifying several types of, of resources that people had during the Calcolithic period. So, for example, it was possible to identify the use of fresh water for the irrigation of fields, fishing, as well as the collecting of other marine resources as shells uh, or even salt. Along with other marine resources, it was also important identifying forestal resources, evidenced in different iconographic representations in funerary contexts as this one in, in Montelirio, which allowed the team to explore about the possibilities of having agropastoral economies within the ESA, the ESA type uh, landscapes during the Calcolithic. Other type of resources were identified, for example, in this site next to Carmona, called La Loma del Real Tesoro, which according to the evidence is found after several excavation campaigns, it seems that it was used as a cultural and social central power place. Uh, which led to consider the possibility of having also immaterial resources that shaped not only the landscape, but also the social relationships uh, among the Calcolithic people. Uh, this is just a very schematic resource uh, of the first phase, sorry. Uh, I'm not going into detail about this first phase because I'm in the second phase of this uh, project. But if you maybe are interested in knowing more about this first phase, you are welcome to, to, to ask some questions at the end of the session. So now at this moment, we are in the first year of the second phase, which intends to characterize the early and the middle Bronze Age in the same area where the first phase was developed. It means the middle and lower Guadalquivir valleys. Uh, we intend to characterize as well the use of resources and the landscape use, taking into account different particular elements that we found in this period. So for example, the, the possible effects that climate could have. And here uh, we highlight some elements from the landscape use, for example, the settlement patterns and the mobility, uh, the resources taking into account some of the results that we had in the, f in, the, in the first phase, we can start to consider some elements that could be part of, uh, of these uh, resources uh, as water, minerals, fauna, plants and crops and, and, and the knowledge itself. And also the climate, because during that period there was a climatic event that uh, in, has a very huge impact in, in, in Europe and uh, led to different social and cultural change uh, among this whole territory. So we are also considering this uh, uh, character of, of the climate as a trigger of also social and cultural change between the Calcolithic and the Bronze Age periods. Mm, so 
the transition from calculated to the Bronze Age implies several changes in the ways of living and its changes are focus of this project. So we are interested in identifying some of the characteristics of, of these pairs that have been already evidenced in other areas of the Iberian Peninsula. And when I mention other areas of the Iberian Peninsula, I want to, to, to give you like a brief example. So this is a map that you can find in Wikipedia. This is a Wikipedia map of the Bronze Age. I decided to start with this map because this is the first thing people that are not archaeologists uh, will find on the internet if they look for Bronze Age in the Iberian Peninsula. You can see very well defined the, uh, the already known areas of El Argar and something that uh, here is uh, written as the Atalaya group here in Portugal. But if you have worked as archaeologists in this area, you know that this is not known as the Atalaya group. But anyway, this is how Wikipedia displays this information, and millions of people will find, find it like this. These are now other representations, now done by archaeologists, of the early and middle Bronze Age groups in the southern Iberian Peninsula. Something in common, or maybe this uh, popular Wikipedia map got this shape and uh, represented the Bronze Age like this, maybe because all these representations done during the history of the research of the Bronze Age in the Iberian Peninsula um, has this particular characteristic, and is maybe the use of the territory, the representation of the territory, as something that particularly has the middle valley of the Guadalquivir River as an empty place. Mm, here you can find so how the maps of representation of, of the Bronze Age intend to separate the areas they characterize it. For example, uh, here they intend to separate, uh, separate El Argar uh, or maybe the this, uh, Bronze of the Southwestern and uh, despite these representations, some archaeologists have explored and have done questions about how developed the early and the middle Bronze Age in the middle Guadalquivir Valley. Here there are some examples, just three examples, um, that trade this issue, and indeed they consider the lack of evidences of, um, of or the amount of findings that has not been the same as, as El Argar, for example. Other examples are the text of Medeiros Martin in 1996, where the chronology of the Bronze Age barely includes sites from the middle Guadalquivir Valley, and the text of Escasena Carrasco of 1995 that literally talks about the bronze that never exist in the pre-colonial Tartessos. So another issue is the lack of evidences that let us know how was the transition from the Calcolithic to the bronze in the middle Guadalquivir Valley. Some studies have identified, for example, in Coria del Rio in Sevilla, or in the lower valley of Cadiz and, and Malaga, some sequences that shows the Bronze Age layers that are, are, that are above the Calcolithic layers. Um, but this is not the case in most of the studies that identify sites of the Bronze Age in, in Sevilla or Cordoba, for example. So there are actually more studies that show a hiatus during this uh, period, or just an abandon of the Calcolithic sites showing a change in the settlement patterns of this area, but not really something that explains uh, us what happened to, to the population in this area from the third to the second millennium before Christ. So, but it is possible that some of these absences or voids can be just the result of how the research was done during the last decades, or even from the first time of, uh, of the 19th century, when the Syriac brothers uh, started to excavate El Argar. From our point of view, and after looking at different studies done in Andalusia, we consider that there is a bias in the statements about territory and settlement patterns towards El Argar and the bronze of the southeast uh, and southwest. And there is no signal that the middle Guadalquivir Valley has been just an, an, an empty place. Anyway, we don't discard the possibility that this uh, area has been abandoned. Uh, but first, let's have a look to, to the different interpretations or points of view about what happened during the early and, and middle Bronze Age in, in the middle Guadalquivir Valley. So according to the state of the art of the research done in the, in the middle Guadalquivir Valley, it, it has been considered in, in three ways by, by archaeologists. So first, this middle Guadalquivir Valley was considered as a periphery of the Argaric territory. 
Uh, the map of the Ogari territory was defined by Tarradell in 1963. And since then, the history of the research focused in studying El Argar as a territory enclosed in a center, which was placed in the provinces of Almería and Murcia. And, and then it expanded, expanded until getting to the mountains of Jaén and most of the province, province of Granada. But after 60 years, the, the, the site of Peñalosa, for example, was considered as the most northwestern village uh, of the organic territory. And, and some studies have been focused on looking relationships between center and periphery, understanding periphery as the settlements playing place in, in this area of Jaén and, and Granada. However, there are some questions about the way the history of the research has configured uh, the idea of an organic territory. So, for example, how must we read, how must we read the concept of organic territory, this, this concept of territory? Uh, as an enclosed one uh, with borders, <laughs> a center and a periphery. Uh, if so, what happened beyond that borders? It means in the in the middle of Guadalquivir Valley. How was the relationship with the with the center and how was the the flow of resources between uh, both sides, for example? Uh, I will let these questions open, of course, because my intention is just to let some reflections about it and maybe maybe open a, a further discussion. Uh, the second way, uh, the middle Guadalquivir Valley has been considered as a corridor. And this corridor has been expanded in two ways as well. First, uh, as a place between El Argar and the Southwest, where the flow of resources led some traces of the communication between both sides. Or maybe as a place where the calcolytic groups were still present during the early Bronze Age, whereas the Largar, for example, social and cultural changes led to radical changes in settlement patterns, funerary practices, and, and the material culture. One of the expressions, expressions of the mixing of both Argaric and Southwestern societies was in, uh, was in what is called the Bronze de la Campiña Cordobesa. Some sites in the countryside of Cordoba have been considered as places where Arctic and Southwestern uh, societies communicated uh, and led evidences of this interaction. This interaction could be again considered as the relationship between uh, two population centers, for example, and the middle of Alquivir Valley as the place where this interaction occurred. Another point of view is one of the, that expresses that there was a migration of groups from the southwest to the southeast during the end of the Calcolithic and the early Bronze Age, which led some traces in the middle Guadalquivir Valley. This conclusion uh, was uh, set by some colleagues the last month of June in Paris, and some of their claims are still in press. So it's not any publication yet, but the idea was the during the 4.2 uh, closure event, this massive drought at the end of the third millennium before Christ led to the migration of groups to the site uh, where would be later known as El Arga. The third way, the middle Guadalquivir Valley uh, can be considered as a low-ranked territory, let's say as a place where the resources were not uh, as good as the ones present in, in El Arga or in the southwest. This due to climatic events, and here comes again the 4.2 clear event as the trigger of a series of challenges that could have led to the reduction of population in this zone after the Calcolithic period. However, the relation between this climatic event and the settlement patterns uh, during the Bronze Age has not been well characterized yet for the whole uh, Southern Iberian Peninsula. Or at least the, the studies regarding this issue have not been yet published. I have to refer here again to the study made by our colleagues from, from Kiel. Uh, that is precisely focusing the characterizing this relationship between the 4.2 event and the settlement patterns of, of this area. We, we are expecting to do the result to, to know what happened in, 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 in this uh, region. Um, however, there are other studies, as this uh, one, uh, that claims that the impact of this event was not so strong in, this, in some organic areas. Whereas this one claims that the climatic event impacted seriously the terrains due to, due, due to their aridification and the reduction of cultivable areas. In this first case, the study is focusing on understanding the dynamics into the Argaric territory, what led us to consider, again, that maybe the situation was very different in the middle Guadalquivir Valley. Maybe in the second case, uh, which is closer to our study area, it is clear that the middle Guadalquivir Valley is considered as a place not able to get important resources as water for cultivation and, of course, for human and animal consumption. Well, just just to finish, uh, we are going to I'm going to present the, 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 what we have done in this first stage of the research. What I just 
told you was the uh, analysis of the quality of information uh, that we have uh, collected uh, by, by, by bibliography. And then, with all this information, we elaborated a database, which is portable to geographic information system. And this database allowed us to not only compare uh, or place the sites, the different sites that we had identified in the middle of the Valley into the geographical information system, but also uh, comparing the different material culture that is present in, in these different sites. Um, so one of the results is uh, this one. You can see here a heat map. And this heat map shows that, uh, as you can see, in the eastern part of Andalusia, the amount of research done is huge. And that's why you have a number of sites that you can identify as uh, Argaric sites, for example. And then in this new Guadalquivir Valley, you can see again that there has not been so much research done. done. So that's why we have this gap. And it's not a matter of representation of the territories, or it's, it's just a matter of, of the history of the research. OK, so in order to fill that gap, we did an archaeological survey in, in March and April, but the results of this archaeological survey were uh, unfortunately not bronze, uh, no bronze age sites found. <laughs> we found several sites from Roman periods, calculated periods, but not yet uh, bronze age sites. And then uh, what I wanted to tell you, uh, uh, to show you is that uh, I would like to compare this map of uh, Carlo Vegeta from the 1989, which if we compare this map with the different sites that have been reported by different archaeologists and that we have collected in the database, we can see that there are more sites and there are more evidence that indeed the Bronze Age existed in, in, in that area of the Guadalquivir well, Valley. Um, OK, so we are crossing now. This is an ongoing research. So we are crossing this information with other types of resources, like quarries, like uh, mine ores. Also, the use of soils. We are collaborating with the, uh, some geographers and some soil scientists to analyze also the, the, the use of the soil as a resource. And we are also studying transhumans and traffic routes that led us to understand maybe the other hypothesis that we have about maybe the communication between uh, east and west, and also the communication between the Guadalquivir Valley and the Guadiana, also to up to the north. OK. so. To conclude, I just wanted to, to do some remarks, and is that this, uh, according to with uh, we have found, there is indeed the, the, the bronze age in the, in the middle of the Kibir Valley, but the interpretation depends on three factors. The first one, the transition from the late Copper Age period to the bronze age is still not clear, uh, it's not well understood, so we need to, to, to start uh, do, do further research about it. The second, that these changes, experience it, uh, were related to climatic, social, and cultural phenomena that were not independent uh, from other areas of the peninsula. And it means that uh, it is possible that we could investigate these uh, changes as a general phenomenon uh, affecting the whole Southern Iberian Peninsula, but without, without using the representations of both border territories separating different uh, like state-like societies, separated one from each other, but maybe considering the Bronze Age as a general phenomenon and maybe different responses from the societies from the South, uh, Southern Iberian Peninsula. These uh, are the, 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 the final remarks that I wanted to do. So I, we got future perspectives, but yeah, this is an ongoing research. So that's why I, there are some more to do. And yeah, thank you so much. I'm sorry.